windows and doors, uh, get out of vehicles. Again, tornado warning now for southeastern Gordon County, northwestern Pickens County until 6 p.m. We have a severe thunderstorm that is capable of producing a tornado. I'm going to go back to uh, a different mode on the radar here. Um, not seeing the defined signature of any kind of a tornado, but uh, let's take a closer look at that. Yeah, there's some green and red very close together there, but uh, that is a, a broad circulation at this point in time. Uh, let's take a look. Um, let's see, if you just hang with me here, I'm going to do something a little bit different and, and go to a, a little mode on the radar here that I can uh, take a look at with you. So, uh, nope, not seeing much there. Uh, hang with me here. So, again, there it is. It's, it's a radar-indicated rotation inside that thunderstorm. So that location that I'm talking about here is right over Sonoraville or near Calhoun. And that storm is moving east at about uh, 30 miles per hour. I'm going to put a storm track on there for you. And right to the heart of the storm there that we can see, though, so it's moving 30 miles an hour. So some of the people in the past. So you need to take cover right now in Ranger. That is seven minutes away from you. Ludville, that is 19 minutes from you, and Blaine, 25 minutes. So, yeah, that's that much time to prepare. You're going to see some rain before then, but that's the most dangerous part of this thunderstorm where the uh, rotation is seen on the radar here. So, again, that's over Sonoraville uh, near Calhoun right now, moving east at 30. So if you live in Ranger, six mi uh, minutes away from you, Ludville, 18 minutes, and Blaine, 24 minutes away from you right now. If you're just joining me, the National Weather Service, uh, this was rather a benign-looking storm. There's not even any lightning with it. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, zero on the lightning here. So a kind of a benign, heavy downpour that we just got a tornado warning on. So let me take you, give you the broader view here. So there's the warning up there, and you can see that uh, basically it's it's uh, just a heavy downpour of rain. Uh, not even a kind of any kind of signature that I can identify inside that except where we have the green that's meeting the red here in, in a very short distance. So let me put some of the velocities on here so we can take a look at uh, what we might be dealing with here. About 40 miles per hour there, going on up toward 26. That's going away from the radar. So not a great deal of rotation in that. And, and again, if you're just joining me, it's a radar-indicated tornado in this particular heavy downpour. It's not even a thunderstorm, really. Uh, so there it is, and there could be a little bit of hail uh, embedded in that storm as well. That's a little bit purple showing up uh, just to the west of the 411 sign that you see on the radar there. So, again, if you're just joining me, the tor uh, National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning for southeastern Gordon County and also into the northwestern part of Pickens County, and this will go on until 6 p.m. We have a severe thunderstorm that's capable of producing a tornado located over Sonoraville or near Calhoun. It's now moving east at about 30 miles an hour. Calhoun, you're in the clear now. It's well east of you and well east of I-75 there. But I'll put this in motion for you and um, give you a little bit of an idea where it is going so you can tell what's going on there. So a little better organization there. Not so much right now. You can see the general motion toward the east at 30 miles per hour. Very heavy rainfall involved in that storm as well, but uh, right now really not seeing the any kind of identifiable features in that particular storm that would uh, show me any kind of rotation. I'm going to go back to the velocity mode there. Uh, there is uh, just to the west of 411. Uh, there is a circulation there. I'm going to query those little pixels down here, see what kind of a rotation we have there. So there's there's some rotation in that. It's not a great deal, but I'm going to put a storm track on that center of rotation for you and give you an idea of where that is heading next. So moving east at 30, and we're going to put the uh, storm track on that is going to be right in the middle of that circulation there. So the green and the red that are very close together, and I'll put that on. It's moving east at 30 miles an hour, so it's just about off the screen there. So Ranger, that's still seven minutes away from you. Ludville, now 18 minutes from you. And Blaine, the center of that rotation uh, where we think there might be a tornado, is 24 minutes from you. So that is Blaine. And I'll zoom out a little bit to give you your bearings here. So you, that is an east-southeastern part of Gordon County, now moving into the western part of Pickens County. So Ludville 
and Blaine, you're in the path of that storm. Ranger, it may pass a little bit to the south of you there where that center of circulation is. But there's the storm track on it moving east at 30. And the pixels that show up are the green and the red that are very close together. Uh, that is indicating where we have that circulation with the possible tornado that's going on, again, in southeastern Pickens County, moving to, uh, rather, southeastern Gordon County, moving toward the western part of Pickens County. I'm going to go to a couple of different modes on the radar here uh, to see if I can't find uh, another mode that might be a little more in the way of a uh, definitive as far as the circulation goes on that. So, uh, again, still not seeing uh, uh, anything there that, that uh, tells me that that is on the ground. So this is a radar-indicated tornado. Uh, the circulation is embedded in that little area purple there that you see. So, so I know you're concerned there in Ranger. So this is moving going to be right along 411. If you have anybody that you think might be traveling between, let's say, Fairmount and, and Ranger uh, on 411, you give them a call, tell them to just stop right now. Don't go any further north there into Gordon County because that is a dangerous storm moving east at 30 miles per hour. So please give them a heads up there if you know of anybody uh, give them a call on their cell phone right now that might be moving up from, uh, say, Bartow County along uh, 411 there from Fairmount over toward Ranger. You tell them to stay put. Do not go any further into that area. That is, uh, uh, you know, a dangerous storm moving east at 30. So the circulation is still here. I've still got the storm track on. So Ranger, uh, it's going to pass just below you there in about five minutes from now. And Ludville, man, that's headed right for you. I need you to take cover and get the kids, go down to the basement, a bicycle helmet, any kind of a helmet you can. Uh, keep your shoes with you in case you have to evacuate in case there's any damage. Uh, I'm getting another update here from the National Weather Service here, so uh, bear with me as I look at that. And again, uh, yep, we're looking at, uh, well, we have another tornado warning now that has just been issued by the National Weather Service. Uh, this is now down here in Newton County. So things are becoming very active all of a sudden across northern Georgia. So here again is a new tornado warning, and this is now going in for western, west central Morgan County, south central Walton County, and northeastern Newton County. This is going to go on until 6.30. So we have a severe thunderstorm that is capable of producing a tornado. This is located over Oxford. So that's uh, over Covington and moving east at 25 miles per hour. And there's definitely a hook echo that is showing up on this. So let me get rid of that storm track there. And let's take a closer look at what's going on down here. Uh, some of the velocities look a little bit more impressive with this particular storm. Uh, yep, 51 miles an hour. So that's Covington and Oxford there. You want to take cover immediately. That's some, that's some damaging wind there. And uh, a little better cover, Joe. You have, a, you have a huge circulation here that's going on. The green and the red are in really close proximity. Uh, this appears to be a rather dangerous storm. So let me uh, get you another little shot here, see what kind of wind we're dealing with. 42 miles an hour there. Yeah, we got some strong wind here going on, folks, regardless of any tornado situation. So if you're just joining me, we all of a sudden got two tornado warnings. We have the tornado warning up to the north of us there in Gordon County and Pickens County. And this one here in Covington and Oxford right now. Uh, this is just to the, uh, the circulates just north of Covington and just the, the major area is right to the northeast of Oxford. So I'm going to put a storm track on this for you now. This is kind of more of a rural area. So this is moving east-northeast at 25, a little, little slower than the one up to the north. So that social circle, you have 19 minutes to prepare for that storm. So I want you to know that you have a severe thunderstorm. It's capable of producing a tornado, and it is moving toward the east-northeast at about 25 miles per hour. So we have the tornado warning now for west-central Morgan County, south-central Walton County, and northeastern Newton County, and this goes until 6.30. Now, again, with this particular storm, I'm not denoting any lightning with it. So it's not kind of a thunderstorm that, that is producing lightning thunder, but it is producing some locally heavy rainfall there, and it is moving toward you at about 25 miles an hour in social circle. Let me go back up to the storm up to the north now. And again, this is our new tornado warning that we have up here for Gordon County. And uh, this storm does not look impressive, folks. I, I mean, I really have to tell you that. Uh, we still have a little circulation there. So green and the red, that's, uh, it's moving right over 411. So let me query some of the winds that are in that. Let's take a look at that wind. Yeah, that's 65 miles an hour, folks, right there. And the wind right next to it is 32. So, yeah, you have a, uh, 
you have a, a clear circulation there that's going over 400. So I'm going to put a storm track on that. Now this one is moving toward the east at about 30 miles per hour. So this storm track, I'll put it right on the center of that circulation. And there you go. So here we are. So Ranger, uh, it's going to pass just to the south of you. If you look out south now, you're, you, uh, you're probably going to see some strong gusty winds in your area. But again, you're going to be passing. That's going to pass just to the south. Now, uh, Ludville, that's probably going to move a little bit to the north of you there, but it's 11 minutes away from being very close to you. And then we have Blaine that's downstream there. So Blaine, that's 17 minutes from you. I'll put that um, out of the way there. So Blaine, then we have Talking Rock. Uh, you're in the path of that storm. So Blaine and Talking Rock, you need to take cover right now. This storm is moving at you at 30 miles an hour, and it is a radar-indicated tornado. So again, Ranger, passing just to your south right now. So it's right along 411 there. I hope uh, you've call, called any friends, relatives you might have that are be traveling along 411 because uh, that's a dangerous storm forming right over the interstate, right over the uh, freeway there. So that is moving east at 30. So now we have to prepare here in Ludville. So I think the center of that circulation is going to pass just about, oh, maybe five miles to the north of you in Ludville. And then downstream, we have Blaine and Talking Rock. Uh, those are in the path of the storm there. So Blaine, that's 16 minutes from you, and Talking Rock, that is uh, 22 minutes from you right now. So let's head back down to the south. We have another tornado warning. And again, this is uh, out of nowhere here. So here's the storm here in Newton County, and this is a little more defined here. It's really tiny. Uh, this is moving toward the east, northeast at 25 miles per hour. And here's the velocity mode on it again, and I'll see if I can't find another mode. The circulation of here does not look that impressive, but we had uh, some 65 mile per hour winds there. They're 27 now in that and 12. So their winds have really decreased in that particular storm there. I'm going to put a storm track on that for you and where I see the hook echo. And there's certainly a hook. You can see it's well defined there. So we'll put a storm track on that and that is moving toward the east at about 25. So there you go. And social circle. Uh, you're in the path of that. That is 19 minutes from you. So you don't have a lot of time to prepare here. Social circle, take cover immediately. Lowest floor of your house, away from windows and doors. If you can grab a bicycle helmet, uh, take that with you. Make sure you keep your shoes close by, any kind of pillows down to the lowest level of your house, away from windows and doors. If you don't have a basement, interior hallway, maybe a closet, uh, you do want to take cover immediately there in Social Circle and all of the areas that are between Oxford Covington and Social Circle. That's where that storm is headed next. I'll give you the broader view now. We're going to head back up and take a look. There's the other tornado worn storm that is now moving into the western part of Pickens County. I'll zoom down there again. And let's take a look. So again, it's just along 411 now. The worst part of that storm is cleared 411, but it's still raining heavily there. And I'll go back to the velocity mode and take a look down there with you, see if I can find anything. Uh, really not, uh, looks like it may have weakened quite a bit here. Uh, let's take a look at the numbers. Uh, I'll query some of this, uh, some of the pickles here, yeah. From 65 miles an hour to a couple of minutes ago to 28 miles per hour now. Uh, well, even here's the newest scan that just came in over the radar. So uh, let me clear that out of here and take a look. Uh, boy, there's no circulation at all that I can see in that storm. Um, looking at two modes on the radar, and here's the reflectivity mode. And if it's anything, it's right in that area of purple there that I'm pointing out on the screen. So that is now cleared for 11. So let me put a storm track on that part of the storm. And this is moving at 30 miles an hour toward the east. And so we have it right there. So Clipper, that's nine minutes from you now. Blaine, 11 minutes. Talking Rock, uh, 17 minutes. And Jasper, 26 or 25 minutes from now. So you can see who's in the path there. So we have anybody that you know that might be traveling along, let's say, from Nelson uh, up toward Talking Rock and into Clipper. Uh, you see 515 there. You tell them to stop right now before they get on up. Uh, to any further north into parts of Pickens County. So this is a storm that is moving now toward 515, and it is now in northwestern Pickens County. The heavy rain actually extends up toward Gilmer County now. Uh, so I want you to be taking cover immediately if you live in Clipper or Talking Rock. Talking Rock, that storm is dead center on you right now. So, and again, uh, there's, let's see, we have Blaine down here as well. Uh, that's 10 minutes for you. Clipper, uh, 8 minutes. 
but Talking Rock, that's 16 minutes from you, and you can see that's on basically a direct line coming right at you there. So I, I want you to take cover right now, lowest floor possible, away from windows, doors, bicycle helmet, pillows, uh, keep your shoes on, uh, anything else. This is a storm that is uh, showing a, a rotation inside the thunderstorm here. I'm going to go back. That's the reflectivity mode showing you the rain, and what we want to see are green and reds that are very close together, and I don't see that. There's another one, and I do see just a little bit of red there showing up with a higher intensity. That's a 36-mile-per-hour wind that's going away from the radar there. So that's well below severe limits. But nevertheless, there's rotation in that thunderstorm, and we've certainly seen that plain as day here over the course of the last uh, 30 minutes or so as I've been tracking these storms here at Severe Weather Center, too. So that's that storm. Uh, there's the reflectivity mode, and there you see the heavy rain that extends back up toward uh, just to the south of Ella J there in Gilmer County. So I need to take cover uh, immediately there. And here's the storm that is uh, rather benign looking there. It's uh, just cleared Oxford Covington and is just hanging there just to the north of I-20. Uh, let me go into our velocity modes and we'll check out some of the... Uh, well, you can see a very, really broad circulation. So the green is the wind going toward the radar. The red is the wind going toward away. Uh, they're really not in close proximity. That is a really broad circulation in that. It's not tightly wound at all. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here, and I, I know we still have some wind going on here. So you know, let's take a look. So you're near River Cove or Beacon Hill. Uh, let me see what kind of wind you're going to be dealing with here. So they have a pretty stout wind there. Uh, about 53 miles per hour. Near Beacon Hill, you have a 40 mile per hour wind, 45 miles an hour. Uh, as we head back towards Social Circle Road, that's about a 40 mile per hour wind there. And those winds are moving east at 25 miles per hour. That storm is moving east at 25. I'm going to put that in motion for you and clear it out and take a look. Let's take a look now. I want you to take a look with me at the intensity. Let's see what happens uh, from 30 minutes ago until right now. Pretty intense storm, but not so much right now as it is clear the Oxford Covington area. So we'll continue now the uh, tornado warning now for the uh, Pickens County area. Now that is going to expire here in short order. So yeah, that expires at six o'clock for southeastern Gordon County and Pickens County. And I don't see anything being added by the National Weather Service uh, that would indicate uh, that that warning is likely to be continued. So that is certainly moving out. Uh, not in not in the indication that uh, we have a rotation in that storm anymore, but we will certainly see. And I don't see it on that mode of the radar, and I'll see it that that mode. That's gone. So that's certainly some good news there. Uh, good call, guys. National Weather Service doing a great job again today. And this was certainly unexpected. We had a couple of not even thunderstorms. They were just kind of storms without the lightning and thunder. But we did have the heavy rain, and of course, with the wind pattern that we have, the wind shear that is going on. We, uh, we, we have the rotation of the thunderstorm. The winds really increase from the ground level up to about 5,000 feet. That low-level shear is certainly in place there. And that is going to be the rule again as we go on through tomorrow night as well. So we have a, a great deal of wind going on with these storms uh, that is going increasing with speed from up above the ground. And I'll show you what, what's going to happen tomorrow night, too, as long as we're here uh, dealing with this right now. And... Uh, just hang on with me for just a second. I'll show you here. Uh, one second. And we'll come. Yep. Okay. Uh, we just want to inform you that Channel 2 Action News is at 6 is starting right now. And uh, we are tracking uh, two tornado worn storms across northern Georgia right now. And the ones that are up into... Uh, uh, Pickens County, that is expiring. Let's see if it goes away here. There's the warning on it. Let's see. Uh, it should be dropped any second. Uh, the storm that is moving out of the eastern part of Newton County is now moving along just to the north of I-20 there in the southern part of Walton County. So it's about to enter Walton County there. And here, as, as well, I'll show you a second here, what we're going to be dealing with overnight tomorrow, again, as we get into the early part of Sunday morning. So this is another dangerous storm system. And we have some really powerful wind shear that is going on 
uh, with that particular storm, as I'll show you here. Take a look. See that this is going to be Saturday night at 9 o'clock. Those are the upper level winds that we're dealing with right now in northern Georgia. That'll still be over those fierce thunderstorms with this intense squall line moving in for Saturday night. And I'm going to tell you more about that as we go through uh, Channel 2 Action News at 6. But right now, again, the tornado warning should be expiring here in about a few seconds there for uh, now Pickens County and southern parts of Gilmer County. So that's just rain now. And the storm still continues now. These That's the one down into the, uh, let's see, as we get down toward uh, that storm there in the southeastern part of Morgan County, Walton and Newton, that is still a warm storm. And that one, that warning continues now until 6.30. I'm going to stay with you until that warning is cleared, but uh, I'm not seeing anything. That is a really tiny storm. And, yeah, the tornado warning up in uh, Gilmer and Pickens just ended there. So I'm going to stick with this guy here. Uh, still not detecting any kind of a rotation. It's really relevant here. That's really small. There's some strong wind with that for sure. And there's a really broad circulation of green and red. That's a very large area. They're usually very compact. Uh, but, again, some strong winds that are likely in this area as well. So we'll zoom down and see who's going to get these strong winds here. So that would be River Core and over towards social circle. So I'll stop the time lapse here, get that done, and I'm going to put on some numbers here to show you what kind of wind we're dealing with. Some really powerful winds here. I bet they're over 50, yeah, 57 miles an hour. So that qualifies as a, a severe thunderstorm for sure. So that is near River Core. Uh, I would take cover now. That's a, that's a dangerous wind as it is without any kind of a tornado, uh, and that certainly can bring down trees for sure. Uh, the winds ahead of that over towards Social Circle Road are around 41 miles an hour. And a little further, let me go clear some of that off. And I still see some, some really stout wind here just between around uh, Beacon Hill. So there's your, there's your tornado warning now, uh, in effect until 630 for Newton County. Uh, that is about ready to move into the Walton County area. So I want you to be prepared to take cover here uh, should that warning be extended now even further toward the east. So that's the tornado warning there. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. This is a really tiny storm, folks. It doesn't make any difference as far as the uh, size goes or intensity. But there, there you see the storms that are up in uh, LJ, Gilmer County area. That storm is uh, not warned anymore. So the, the tornado warning has stopped there in the southern part of Gilmer County. Uh, really continues here until 6.30 or until the National Weather Service says we are all clear. But regardless of the, uh, of, of the tornado signature in there, there's some strong wind. So that's around Alcove Road. I think you're seeing some really strong wind there. And yeah, and down toward River Cove too. I'll take a look at that wind with you right here and see if it's decreased any a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. But not much. Still, still strong at around 50 miles an hour. Heading toward the Social Circle area, Social Circle Road. That wind is at 35 miles per hour. And a little farther south here. Let's check it out. 41 there, uh, southeast of River Cove. So, yeah, some really strong wind with this, regardless of any kind of a uh, uh, tornado circulation. I just want you to be weather aware here. So this is now moving out of Newton County, moving to the southern part of Walton County. It's a really tiny storm. Very, very tiny. Doesn't measure much across, maybe about five miles across, but it's just to the north of I-20. So if you live in the southern part of Walton County, so this is more or less going into a, uh, a little bit of a rural area. I'm going to put a storm track on that for you, and I'll give you the most dangerous part of the storm there. As it moves east at uh, east-northeast at about 25 miles per hour was the last projection. So Social Circle is still the major city of the path of that. That is in your area in a minute. You need to take cover immediately, a lowest floor possible, away from windows and doors. That's, again, Social Circle. The storm is moving at you in one minute. It is a very complex, a very compact storm. Uh, there's probably a little bit of hail there that I can see right near Alcove Road. So uh, I'm going to pull the car in the garage if you have time. I know it's pouring buckets there right now. So this is the storm that is, again, if you're just joining me, we have a tornado warning. And this is Channel 2 Action News at 6. You're watching. We've been in continuous coverage for about uh, 30 minutes or so now as we've had two tornado-worn storms out of nowhere. Uh, and they were really tiny, and and now we had two tornado warnings. But the good news is the one up in Pickens County is gone. So this is the one we are concentrating on. And as you can see, it is not a very large storm uh, in the scheme of things there. So the tornado warning is now extended through the southern part of Walton County. 
and uh, does include parts of Morgan County just again to the along into the north of I-20 there. That'd be just to the west of Madison, west northwest of Madison. Uh, that storm is moving toward the east northeast, more or less east northeast at around 25 miles per hour. I will put that in motion for you here so you can see the general area that is moving to in case you uh, have friends or relatives in that area. And it is compact. It is no doubt compact. And it, and it seems to be intensifying a little bit there, but it doesn't show that uh, signature of a hook echo on the back of the storm. It is just like a little mini supercell storm there. It's probably rotating. And uh, that's you can certainly see the rotation in this velocity mode here. I'll go to a different mode. And you're seeing the green and the red there. You see that green and the red? Uh, there's definitely a circulation there. And I'm going to query query that for you, show you how the winds are going toward and away from the radar there so you get a good idea of what we're doing as far as intensity goes. Remember, about five minutes ago it was 57 miles an hour. Here's what it is right now. All right, really dropped off dramatically. That's the highest wind speed in that storm, and the wind going uh, toward the radar is 11 miles an hour. It's going away from the radar at 36 miles per hour. So you have a pretty good composite shear there, uh, 47 miles an hour. So that's still below severe storm strength. Nevertheless, it is capable of taking roof shingles off, taking down fences and the like, and uh, all that. So uh, I want you to be prepared for that as it moves toward the east at about uh, 30 miles per hour. So the total lightning strikes there, you can see really nothing going on. It's not even one of those kind of thunderstorms that you hear of the lightning like we did and thunder like we did the other night across northern Georgia. I'll go back to the reflectivity mode. There it is. Likely going to be some small hail here, and that's showing up. Uh, in the purple areas that, uh, let me go, so that's the Alcova Drive. So just to the north of Alcova Drive. Now it's east of Alcova Road now, and here's the newest scan. So that's where the hail is now. And let me see if the new scan has presented us with any additional issues here. Let's go back and take a look at some of that wind here that's moving toward East Hightower Trail. Uh, yeah, it's gone up again a little bit, about 57 mile an hour wind there and over toward uh, the Thurman Bacchus Road area. That's about a 43 mile per hour sustained wind. Uh, those are sustained, and as we head over toward uh, the western part of Hawkins Academy Road, you're looking at a 30 mile per hour wind. So that's the uh, area there that is moving toward the, uh, the uh, Georgia Highway 11 there. That's if you have anybody going along Georgia Highway 11 that you think uh, driving right now, you tell them to pull up, don't go any further to the north, uh, we're dealing with some strong gusty winds right along uh, Georgia 11 there. So basically, if you're just joining us, uh, we have a tornado warned storm uh, that is uh, moving out of Walton County. So it has now exited Walton, uh, rather uh, uh, Newton County, moving into the southwestern part and southern part of Walton County. So it'll be southeast of Walnut Grove. Oxford, Covington, I know you had the heavy rain and the strong gusty winds with that. So it has now cleared your area and is now moving into the southern part of Walton County. If you're just joining me, uh, we've been in continuous tornado coverage since about 540 this afternoon. We've had two tornado warnings, one up in the North Georgia mountains for Pickens County and Gordon County. Uh, that tornado warning is expired. I know you might be concerned about that storm, so let's just go take a look at it and see what's going on with it. So this was the tornado warn storm here. Now just a big area of rain that's covering the southeastern part of Gilmer County, northern Pickens County, into southern Fannin and now over toward Lumpkin County, uh, just to the west-northwest of Dahlonega. So that's some very heavy rainfall there. There's, uh, let me take a look just to be sure. We have a great radar. We can go inside that storm, and I'm not seeing anything that says we have any kind of circulation there at all. So we're going to focus our attention now to the storm here, still under the tornado warning until 6.30 tonight. I know, are you saying that, that's dangerous? I know, I know, right? Uh, I'm with you on that, but again, it doesn't matter here, so we're seeing some strong winds, nevertheless, even though it's a kind of a compact storm. Uh, the latest scan here, let's take a look at that, and yeah, we're back up to that 57 mile an hour wind, uh, just to the south of that, it's 50 there, so that's right around social circle now, that's what you're dealing with there. Uh, this is a tornado-worn storm, and the winds are, are really, really strong there at 57 miles per hour over social circle. So if you live on East Hightower Trail, uh, yeah, get to the basement, get to the lowest floor part of your house, interior hallway, away from windows and doors. Uh, if you have any uh, trees you suspect uh, might be uh, a little dead or dying or not in great shape, um, get to the other side of the house. 
Uh, it's not going to take much wind to push those over because we've had such heavy rainfall in recent days and saturated soils uh, that we've seen just a tremendous amount of rain that loosens the roots of those trees. In fact, while I'm here, I'm going to go show you what, what that is uh, about here. So let's take a look at the 24-hour rainfall here uh, that we've seen, and I'll show you what that is. We've seen just a trace of rain over the last 12 hours here, but you know how much rain we've seen that with that big storm system we had the other day, two days ago. So uh, that's our radar there, and let's go back to that. And there's your storm there, and so I'm going to go back to the severe weather mode here, and let's keep looking at that, and still, let's see. Not, to be, not seeing any particular circulation there. Very compact storm. The other one is forming here just to the north of I-20 along, uh, right along I-20 there, just in the western part of Rockville County. That'd be northwest of Conyers, that too moving toward the east at 25. I don't see anything that would indicate any rotation in that, and nor do I see any rotation in this particular storm, but we do have the strong straight line wind. And I'm going to several different modes, folks. So here is, here's why we're, we're concerned. Here's why we have the tornado warning. So we have this storm that is actually rotating. That would be a supercell thunderstorm that does that. So there you see the red, and I'm pointing to the red, and there you see the green up here. So this is that broad circulation that's going right on through here. So nothing definitive. So here's the new scan that just came in off the radar. Let's take a look, see what we got going here. Uh, who's going to get some heavy wind? So this is the high tower trail area, so high, a social circle bypass. And the wind here, I think, is going to be rather strong here. Let's take a look, see what we got. 58 miles an hour, up from 57 a minute ago. So the wind certainly really prevalent there. So some very strong, those are severe thunderstorm wind criteria winds. And just to the south of that is 49. And this storm, again, is moving toward the east at 25. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to put a storm track on that wind area. And again, it's moving toward this direction at about 25 miles an hour. Uh, so it's close enough there. I'm not seeing anything. Let me, let me redo that. Uh, I'll draw another storm track on that for you. And again, this is a fairly rural area, but 25 miles an hour. So that's Bostwick. That's 17 minutes. You're way downstream from that. So nothing of a major concern yet, but just Bostwick, keep an eye out there. That's going to pass probably to the south of you. But uh, again, moving out into uh, the northern part of uh, Morgan County. That is just for you. Morgan County, this is getting ready to move into your area. So if you're just joining us, uh, and again, we've been in severe weather coverage here with tornado warnings, two tornado warnings since about 540 this afternoon. So Bostwick, you're in the path of the storm as it moves toward you at 25 miles per hour. We did have two storms. This is one of them. Uh, had a tornado warning on. The other one was up in Gordon County and Pickens County. Uh, that was a radar-indicated rotation in that thunderstorm. Uh, we did not see any reports of anything actually coming down from that. But I bet if you, uh, in this afternoon sun, the sunset, it looked uh, very dramatic to you. And if you have any pictures, uh, send them to me on my Facebook page, and we'll, we'll get those up there so everybody can see. But uh, right now, dealing with a, a, a storm, Okay, apparently we do have uh, damage. Uh, where, uh, Amanda, where was that? Okay. Okay, uh, Chick-fil-A had a damaged uh, store and a car was flipped over there in the Oxford-Covington area. We have a crew that should be getting uh, some video shortly. So that is actually where the storm began at 546 this afternoon over Oxford and Covington as it moved east at 25 miles per hour. So apparently we did have something touched down there briefly. Uh, that was, an, again, uh, the Chick-fil-A there at Oxford, Covington, and also a car flipped over. So again, confirmation there of damage from a possible tornado and certainly the tornado was indicated on radar, as we showed you there, and still seeing some stronger winds in that particular thunderstorm. And I'll zoom on down. Let's see who's getting these strong winds right now. So we'll post that again here. Uh, it's about 55 miles an hour now, decreasing a little bit up, so, up toward the Social Circle Fair Play Road area. That's about a 50-mile-per-hour wind. Um, let's see, over toward the... Uh, the Watkins Academy Road, that's about a 43 mile per hour wind there. Going even further downstream, you can see the winds are a little bit less. Uh, but right here, that's where we're seeing that strong wind area. So that's Hawkins Academy Road and the Social Circle Bypass area. Uh, I would take cover, 
yeah, right now, because it's again, as, as I pointed out, the, so, the, we have had such heavy rainfall, soil is just so saturated, it's not going to take much wind to uh, down a tree. All right, the wind's just dramatically decreased in that new scan. You see what happened there? We went to about a 10 mile per hour decrease down to 47 miles per hour on Hawkins Academy Road and 28 miles per hour near the Social Circle Bypass, 41 mile per hour winds near Watkins Academy Road. So that's the wind now. It is decreasing quite a bit. And we're going to see, we have another 15 minutes on this particular warning. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my storm track and I'll put it on those strong winds where they are now. And again, 25 miles per hour is the forward motion to the east-northeast and still Bostwick in 24 minutes. Uh, nothing really imminent between that uh, uh, area of wind and Bostwick. So I want you to just be weather aware here. We're going to zoom on down to our do our street level mapping and see where those winds are still continuing now. Yeah, winds right over at Hawkins Academy Road. So I would be prepared now. So Mount Perrin Church Road, if you live there, it sounds familiar to you, you might want to be prepared for those strong winds. Social Circle Fair Play Road, also uh, you want to take cover there. Social Circle Fair Play Road going down toward Browning Shoals Road, also in the path of this wind. So this is the wind that's moving right at you right now. So these general areas need to be um, kind of weather aware here. So right around this area here, see that I'm drawing that? So right in this area. So there'll be Social Circle Fair Play Road. Uh, again, the Browning Shoals Road area. That's where that wind is moving toward you. I want you to take cover on the lowest floor possible away from windows and doors and just be prepared. Keep your shoes on, bicycle helmet. Doesn't hurt to get prepared. You can always, you know, relax after a little while. But here's the look across North Georgia right now as far as the rain goes. Still heavy rain across northern Dawson County, southeastern part of Gilmer County. And you see how tiny that little guy is down here. That's a very, very uh, small storm there to the south and east. I just lost uh, some data here. Uh, okay, not sure why that happened, but uh, there you go. So... I just lost my uh, radar somehow. Something got hit. I'm not sure what that was, but bear with me for one second. All right. All right, our radar just uh, had an issue. But nevertheless, we can certainly see where the storms are. That doesn't uh, hamper that. So again, Bostwick, you're in the path of that storm, and that is moving toward you at 25 miles per hour. There it is. Uh, you're seeing it now just to the west-northwest of you, moving toward you at 25 miles an hour. So I will put a storm track on that uh, part of the storm where you did see the, the, the bigger wind. So that is going to put it there. And 27 minutes from now. All right, we're going to get some video in. Uh, we have video coming in from Covington and the Chick-fil-A uh, that saw some damage there. And there you see uh, all the police presence there. Look at the car. Look at the car in the parking lot. Just flipped over there. So this was definitely, uh, we think, a tornado. Look at that, right there, just below the flagpole there. Look at the car totally flipped over in the parking lot. So that's a Chick-fil-A there in Covington in Walton County. And you certainly see the police presence there. I don't see any other major damage other than that car being flipped over. So it may have been a brief touchdown on that tornado, but uh, there it is. We have proof of it. Uh, this is our news crew out there, and that's why they're the best in the business going out into the face of the danger there. Uh, that car actually just flipped over by a possible tornado. That's where the tornado originated, out of the Oxford-Covington area at about, uh, let's see, what time was that? Around 5.46 this afternoon, uh, where we had that tornado possibly touch down. So again, if you're just joining me, uh, Channel 2 Action News at 6 is on, and we've been tracking a couple of tornadoes, one up in the Gordon-Pickens County area. We don't know if anything touched down there. We have no reports of any damage. Uh, the other tornado warning is here. Uh, that is in the uh, areas just to the south of Monroe. Uh, so that is the storm that is moving toward Bostwick at about uh, 25 miles per hour. So uh, let's see, there we go, back up to that. And a level two, let's see, hold on one second. Um, all right, look at the temperatures there. This tells me another thing. Uh, this is the warm front that we talked about that was moving into northern Georgia this afternoon. So that's the warm front that's currently pushing through the area. So uh, that's what's generating these uh, thunderstorms right now 
into the southeastern part of metro Atlanta. So you see the temperatures there running from 70 degrees in Atlanta over toward uh, Eatonton, running at about uh, 70 degrees as well. That warm front just below uh, Canton and just below the Athens area. See those temperatures are running at about uh, the lower 60s there. So I'm sorry my radar is, is uh, kind of uh, dysfunctioning now, but I can get you a little closer look. We'll go down. It looks like this. Uh, is going to escape. The tornado warning will continue until 6.30 tonight, so that's moving a little bit toward Ebenezer at this point in time. Let me give you another view there. Let's take a look at some of the winds there around Ebenezer and just to the south, uh, 51 miles an hour. So they're still going pretty strong here. And let me zoom down to further into the street level areas, and uh, uh, we're not seeing much there. Nope. Okay, so no, no, no rotation is indicated there, but there's a lot of red. And there's the broader rotation of the entire storm. You see the green and the red. So that's a very broad rotation on that particular storm. So um, let's see how broad that is. That's, yeah, that's like four miles wide. So that is certainly a rotating thunderstorm, but certainly not uh, what we would see indicating a tornado threat there. I will query some of those winds on the northern flank here. Let's see, we're going 12 miles an hour toward the radar. No, not really and still about 27 miles an hour. So the winds have gradually decreased. This tornado warning will allow, uh, apparently will be uh, expiring here in about 10 minutes. So uh, I think the threat is over. I don't see uh, much in the way of any uh, indication of anything rapidly strengthening here. It looks like we may have a new tornado warning now. Yes, we do. Here it is, a new tornado warning coming in. And that is from uh, Marietta. So let me get the particulars on that. Uh, All right, tornado warning now for east central Paulding County in northwestern Georgia, west central Cobb County until 645. All right, we have a severe thunderstorm that is capable of producing a tornado located over Hiram or seven miles to the southeast of Dallas. It's moving northeast at 25 miles per hour. Flying debris will be dangerous to those caught in, in, uh, without any shelter. Mobile homes will be damaged or destroyed. Damage to roofs, windows, or vehicles will occur, and tree damage is likely. All right, if you're in the path of the storm, you're in Marietta, Smyrna, Powder Springs, Hiram, Fair Oaks, Dobbins Air Force Base, and Jim R. Miller Park. Marietta, Smyrna, Powder Springs, Hiram, Fair Oaks, Dobbins Air Force Base area, and Jim R. Miller Park. Please take cover immediately uh, as this storm is headed in your direction. So here we are. I'll put on the velocity mode, and we're definitely around Powder Springs is where we're seeing that general rotation there. Uh, yep, there it is. So I'm going to put a storm track on that for you right now, uh, moving toward the uh, east northeast at about 25. So that's going to be pushing it right up into here. So Powder Springs, you're in the path of the storm. Macklin, 13 minutes from you. Marietta, 26 minutes. And Smyrna, 27 minutes away from you. This is a tornado warning now. And these storms are coming in out of nowhere. Look at that. And again, uh, I'm going to switch over to another radar here. Uh, let's see what we can find. No, I'm not seeing that. That. Uh, let's see. We're going to go back here. I'm getting another uh, warning here from the National Weather Service. Let's see what we have. All right, we have a tornado warning now for southeastern Oconee County, uh, northwestern Morgan County, and east central Walton County. So let me get back in the business here. Let me go back and, and uh, see. We're having a little issue with the radar here this afternoon, but there is the new warning that was just issued by the National Weather Service. Uh, this is uh, a storm that is now still producing rotation. That's what we showed you before. That rotation is very prevalent in this particular storm. Uh, the winds are still there, and that broad rotation still exists. Very broad, but still sitting out here to the northwest. So that's moving toward you, Bostwick. I'll put a storm track on there for you. So 25 miles an hour in that general direction, right at you. Braswell, 16 minutes from you. Boswick, that is 20, uh, Boswick, 19 minutes now toward you. So please take cover immediately. Go down to the lowest floor possible, away from windows and doors. I know these storms don't look like massive storms, but they are. And we have one now moving into the heart of Metro Atlanta. Uh, this is now moving uh, toward the east-northeast. So this is moving toward Marietta now. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see where we are here. 
Still, that's, that's, that's pretty good circulation going on to the southwest where we have a hook echo that is showing up a little bit right there, the tail end of that. Uh, I'm going to go to um, our WSB radar here. And uh, so there it is. So there's definitely a hook showing up on that. So Marietta, you need to take cover immediately. And if you're just joining me, we have a tornado warning now. Uh, let's see, we have a couple of tornado warnings. So the new one is for southeastern Oconee, northwestern Morgan, and east central Walton County. This is going to go till 7 o'clock. Uh, this is a, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. It was actually located over Ebenezer. It's about seven miles southwest of Monroe, moving east at 25. The other tornado warning uh, will take us now into the heart of the western suburbs of Atlanta. This is a tornado warning now for east central Paulding County in northwest Georgia and west central Cobb County in north central Georgia. So uh, this is going to continue until 645. We had a severe thunderstorm. It's a little east now. It's producing a tornado over Hiram. It's capable of producing a tornado. It's about seven miles to the southeast of Dallas, moving northeast at 25 miles per hour. So there you see it. Uh, we're zooming on out, and we, we've lost a little bit of our radar data here. I'm not sure if we were hit by something or anything, but um, I'm going to try to get something on here for you. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. Our radar has uh, taken a hit of some sort here, but there is definitely a hook showing up on, on this particular storm that is now approaching Marietta. So there it is. It's just to the north of Powder Springs. Uh, I'll zoom on in there, and let's see if we get some. There's Macklin. So Macklin, I want you to take cover. Uh, over toward West Hampton, you need to take cover in the Marietta area, right around the square. And here you see uh, Dobbins Air Force Base to give you a little idea. Uh, uh, where we are here. So here's here's Dobbins right here. So that's going to pass very close to you. So it's moving toward Dobbins Air Force Base uh, at about 25 miles per hour. So there's Dobbins, there's Macklin. Uh, there you see the Marietta Square and you see I-75. So let me just suggest this. If you, if you know anybody that's coming up from uh, the south on 75, uh, that will be approaching Cobb County. Uh, we just stay put, stay put. Do not come up into Cobb County. So this is running basically between Smyrna and Kennesaw right now, heading directly for the Marietta Square area. And I need you to take cover immediately. I don't want to forget you guys to the south and east here. This is the second uh, storm here. Uh, boy, it's just not showing up too well on radar at all. Uh, this is leaving our area. So let me just query some of the winds See what we're dealing with here. That's a pretty stout wind there at 51 miles an hour, and then 41 and 39. So, but there's definitely a circulation there. So this is the storm here that we have, and this is the storm that hit Covington and uh, damaged a Chick-fil-A there, and actually flipped a car over in the parking lot at the Chick-fil-A in Covington. So that was a, a storm. We will get that that video back a little while. Uh, I'm going to take my radar. Uh, down a little bit here so I can let me see what's going to be just hang with me folks I'm having a little bit of radar trouble so bear with me okay. there we go okay. all right here we go I just there I got it back for you Let's hey Glenn it's Linda line. Stover and I hey. just want to take us to that video for a quick second okay, while you're working good. on the radar you. because we've been getting in some video from the Covington area this is off I-20 and you can see it in the clouds right there what looks like a, a little bit of a funnel cloud exactly. we also got some video of the damage and Glenn you were mentioning that just a minute ago I had a chance to look at some of it close up it looks like two cars at least were actually flipped in the Chick-fil-a parking lot you can see one you can see the hood of it right there but if you look closely to the left of that car there's another car that's flipped too that's right between it. a few cars in the parking yep. lot and then there's a sign at a cvs that was also kind of blown off to the side so whatever happened here was pretty powerful uh, we're trying to get in uh, reports to see if anyone was in the cars when this happened but whatever blew through that area was powerful enough to pick up and flip a couple of cars emergency crews are there right now we have crews on the way as well so just a dramatic change 
change in the weather in the last hour. I mean, really unbelievable how quickly all of this has happened. Uh, and if you're just joining us, you're watching live coverage here on Channel 2 Action News at 6 o'clock. This video came to us from a viewer who was in the Covington area. You're looking at damage in the parking lot of a Chick-fil-A emergency crews there now. A couple of cars flipped over. Our focus now is on the Paulding County and Cobb County area where there's another tornado warning happening. There is indeed, and uh, again, we have that Warren storm out here. We are we're having some severe radar difficulties here, but here's the storm. I'm going to zoom on down, and uh, between about Kennesaw and Smyrna is where this storm is here. So, uh, just bear with me. So here is the circulation that I'm that I'm seeing. Now, this Powder Springs here. Here's kind of the broad circulation. I'll query some of the wind that we're seeing on the on the hook development here. That's about a 45 mile per hour wind there, north of Powder Springs, uh, 29 miles per hour. So uh, there you see it. Uh, here's the new scan in here. Let's take a look at that wind right there. That's about 48 miles per hour. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a storm track on that for you. Uh, let's take a look. First of all, hold on, hold on. What do we got going here? Uh, that's a really, yep, that's a, almost a 60 mile per hour wind. That's just west of you in Marietta. So that's, uh, that's some straight line wind going on right there near the Marietta Square. So I will put a, a little bit of a track on that particular wind right there as it moves northeast at around 25. So that puts it in Marietta. That's, uh, that, that wind is moving at you at a, a good clip there. That's about eight minutes from you in Marietta. I need you to take cover anywhere in and around the Marietta area right now. That is a dangerous storm moving toward you with some strong gusty wind. Now let me go back to where we see that circulation on the back side of the flank here. We'll take a look at some of the winds that are recurring here. Uh, let's see, 46 miles per hour. I'll switch to a different mode. Uh, we definitely have a uh, circulation going on right here. So this is now just to the west of Macklin. I need you to take cover. So Macklin, you take cover right now. Uh, this circulation is right here. See the green and the red that are very close together in close proximity? That is where we think that circulation is capable of reducing and dropping a tornado at any moment. So Macklin, uh, you take cover right now. That storm is moving at you at 25 miles per hour, 25 miles per hour. So again, if you're just joining me, we have a couple of tornado warnings out right now for Cody, Morgan, Cobb, and Walton counties. Uh, these are small storms, very dangerous, and this came out of nowhere this afternoon across North Georgia. So uh, just bear with me here as we look at uh, several modes. I'm trying to figure out where we go. And there you see up in, uh, around Ella J, so very heavy rainfall there. That's the storm that we had a warning on a little while ago. That has since cleared out of that area. But uh, what we're dealing with now is the, uh, is the Warren storm down toward the Marietta Square. And it's right over you right now. So let me switch different modes. Uh, still there, but, but the circulation is going to, it's just, uh, that storm is just falling apart, uh, to be honest with you. It's just falling apart, and so is this one here. Two worn storms that are just, that are not there anymore, <laughs> basically. Uh, looking at a couple of resolution, different kinds of resolution here, but I don't see anything. Mm -hmm. I'll switch over to... Uh, Another radar here. Boy, it's, all of our radars are showing absolutely nothing. Uh, hey, Glenn, it's Linda Stouffer. Yeah. And as you're looking at that, I'm going to bring in Justin Wilfon and have an opportunity to show our viewers some of the damage photos that we're getting okay. in, some of the images. Uh, this is from that Chick-fil-A parking lot. Wow. This is our first close-up look at one of the cars that was flipped over. One of two that I could see from the video. That car is smashed up. Uh, two cars were flipped over. And when you look at the video, you can see the roof of that one. And then look to the left, you can see another car landed in the middle of two other cars. Uh, a sign was uh, definitely damaged in that area as well. And Justin Wilfon, you have some other information about this damage. What you're looking at there is the Covington area uh, just off I-20. Uh, yes, Linda, I've been talking with a worker who was actually inside that Chick-fil-A uh, when he says that tornado briefly touched down there in the parking lot uh, earlier this evening. He says uh, there have been some minor injuries, uh, but luckily he says no one seriously hurt, which is good news 
uh, looking at those pictures, which he actually uh, sent us, certainly a scary situation there in that Chick-fil-A parking lot in Newton County earlier this evening. We are working uh, to get that worker on the phone. We uh, hope to talk with him here uh, shortly. Linda? And Justin, that is remarkable that the injuries are only minor injuries, especially when you consider the context here. We were not under an active tornado warning. We knew there was a chance for rain, mm -hmm. but we didn't know that this severe weather would hit that area until it did. And uh, it's, it's good to hear that the injuries are only minor injuries. Hate to hear of anyone being injured, especially uh, this holiday week. Here we are on New Year's Eve, but um, this is the damage that we're looking at. Whatever blew through there, was very uh, severe, quick, but severe. And Glenn Burns is tracking the tornado warning that we have now in a heavily populated area. We're talking about West Cobb County moving in towards Marietta. Glenn. Yeah, and uh, we're still monitoring that, but I don't see anything left of these storms. Um, so you're looking at the one that just, we have a tornado warning here right around Marietta and Smyrna there. It's just a heavy downpour, not even a heavy downpour anymore. I don't see any strong wind. I don't see any kind of circulation at all. Uh, there's some artifacts that are showing up back here on the back flank of that uh, that are 59 miles an hour, but now that just dropped to 36. This whole storm is falling apart, uh, basically, from what I can see here. Uh, again, there are a couple of more out here to be concerned about, but I don't see anything really that is noticeable uh, on these particular modes here. But the one that is just south of the Athens area now, uh, really not showing up at all as far as... Uh, as far as any uh, circulation, there's just nothing left of it. Uh, so I'm going I'm to see whether the weather service, there it's over Boswick now, but there's really nothing left of this uh, particular cell here. So I'll zoom on down. I got velocity modes on. I don't see any circulation. Let me go to another mode there. There's maybe a little, no, I just don't see anything there. That, that, that's a good sign. I'm happy to see that. Uh, uh, Glenn, we like it when storms disappear like do. that. We, we do. like it when storms dissolve. We, we do. Uh, I mean, if you're going to get these uh, warnings on New Year's Eve like that, I mean, it's good to see yeah. that it just kind of dissolved like it that. It is, but, you know, we're going to be dealing with this. We just better get used to this. We're going to be dealing mm -hmm. with this again tomorrow night into Sunday morning. Uh, we've got our team of meteorologists in place uh, ready to go again. We have a significant threat for strong and severe thunderstorms across northwestern Georgia once again. And, and I'm sorry to say, and, and I know that, that, you know, we don't like this, but the timing is during the overnight hours again. And I'm sorry to see this happen. But, uh, again, you're going to just have to sit with me. It's going to begin actually around 11 o'clock in the evening. And that's going to continue for the better part of Saturday night into Sunday. Uh, here's the, the, the risk level that we'll be dealing with Saturday night, Sunday morning. Level 3 there in northwestern Georgia. All modes of severe weather in play. Tornadoes, damaging winds, heavy rainfall. Uh, we're in the yellow. That's a level two threat, and I know it's, it says slight, but I hate that term by the Storm Prediction Center, but that's what we have. That's just a little less threat level, uh, but with still same parameters, tornadoes, damaging winds, heavy rain, frequent lightning, and, of course, the uh, uh, possibility of uh, any kind of a tornado spin-up. They won't be a long track tornadoes. They'll be rather brief spin-up tornadoes like the one we had in Covington, apparently, here just a little while ago that damaged the Chick-fil-A and, and overturned a couple of cars there. But uh, again, we're dealing with some very heavy rainfall across northern Georgia at times. And let me give you a little uh, idea. Well, I'm sorry about this, but we're having some radar difficulties. But here we are again over toward uh, Smyrna. Not much left of that. And I don't see anything left of this storm here that is just to the south of Watkinsville. I'll see if we can't find another radar. We'll go out to uh, the Greenville-Spartanburg radar coming in from the opposite direction, and there you see that. I don't see anything from that, and it's great to have a network of Doppler radars that we can look at, but I really, uh, I'm not sure why that warning is continuing there, but south of Watkinsville, that, there's nothing left of that storm, and there's really nothing left of the one that just moved across Marietta. I mean, absolutely nothing left of it. Uh, I'll go into another mode there. What a relief really. for everyone yeah. in Cobb County who's been watching so, yeah. so closely. Yeah. But, uh, there's another storm here I have my eye on. And I want to show you this because it's coming over toward Johns Creek. Okay. Uh, and, and I'm going to put the wind on here. I don't like the way the wind is looking there. Yeah, it's gradually increasing. You're seeing, uh, you're seeing the wind up to around 46 miles an hour. So there you see Johns Creek. So just to the west there, uh, again, it'll be to the northwest of Berkeley Lake. Uh, to the west of Johns Creek, you have some really 
strong wind that is really continuing to get stronger. I, I measured that a little while ago at around 27 miles an hour, but uh, that storm has really picked up in intensity a little bit there. And to give you the broader view here, uh, that storm here is picking up in intensity a little bit right now. But we are having some uh, radar issues here, but there, I'll zoom on down, and there you see the one around John's Creek. Doesn't look like much, does it? Absolutely not. Looks like nothing's happening there, and I'll turn on the velocity mode. And there you see uh, the, a lot of red showing up, and those are the reds. And you, there you see a little bit of green showing up on the western flank close to that red. And that's showing up on two scans there. So let me measure that. Uh, that's at 13 miles an hour. And I'll measure this wind up here in this red there that's beginning. Let's see if it's increased intensity at all here. Uh, now it's still at around 49 miles an hour. That's still a stout wind there, and that's going to cause some damage. There's the new scan that it just came in. So let me... Uh, let's see, we have, uh, we still have the counties that are involved in the tornado warning are Coney, Morgan, and Walton. And then we have uh, East Central Paulding is out of it. Cobb County, I think you're pretty much out of it now. I don't see anything. Uh, these are going to continue now until about 7 o'clock. But for all intents and purposes, I don't see uh, really anything happening here. Let's go to another mode on that. Uh, still there around Johns Creek. And here's the storm over Marietta. And... There you can see how small that storm is, and we'll zoom on in again. Uh, that storm is just to the north of Smyrna. There is some wind in there that is just south of Marietta now that I'm going to measure here for you. And it's right there, and that's a 75-mile-per-hour wind. 75 miles per hour. That is a hurricane force wind right there. So that is a wind gust in a rather benign-looking storm. And I'll put it back on reflectivity, and it doesn't look like a whole lot there. Uh, that, that we can see, and, uh, well, my radar is dead. Uh, that storm has moved on, and, and it's way out of the tornado warning area. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to um, go to my computer here, and I will, I will show you some of the storms that are occurring a, a little different way. Uh, we can do that, and I will go to the surface map here, and if you'll hang with me. And what we're dealing with is a, is, a, uh, is a warm front that is moving through northern Georgia right now. But you take a look, and it's in this radar too, and it just doesn't look like anything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we have the heaviest rain in southern parts of Fannin County, northern parts of Dawson, and Mount Ridge move into Lumpkin County, but these, these heavy downpours that we have the tornado warnings on are not showing up on that radar either. So that's North Cobb. And there you see uh, over toward the uh, Oconee County area, northern parts of Morgan County, not a lot occurring there. So uh, bear with me here. I, I'm trying to fix my radar, and uh, hopefully we'll get an engineer here shortly and, and maybe do something with that. But I'm going to have to just reboot this whole system here and, and uh, hope for the best. So uh, just bear with me, folks, on that. And there, there's the warm front to our south. So, again, temperatures south of that warm front, uh, are in the mid-70s there in LaGrange. We were up to 76 degrees last hour there. In, in Atlanta, our temperature is 71 degrees. So that's the warm air riding northward. And again, at about 5,000 feet, we had a, a good bit of wind shear, that the winds were increasing as we went up higher into the atmosphere. So those strong winds were causing the wind circulation there. But what we're dealing with right now on satellite and radar is the heaviest rain is in a big cluster of storms in the northeast Georgia mountains. And these little benign storms, or if you can call them that, not, we didn't even have any lightning with it, are now in North Cobb, and then another one over there at the northeastern part of Fulton County. And I did measure on the radar uh, a wind speed there of 75 miles an hour. So uh, again, even though they're small, that may be a collapsing thunderstorm there, that when it collapses, the wind rushes down toward the ground and then fans out. So. Again, that was a pixel that I queried that had a 75-mile-per-hour signature there uh, pulling out to the north and east. So we're going to go back to Linda Stouffer. She's got some new video now coming in from, uh, I'm not sure where exactly this is, sure. Linda. Okay, Glenn, thank you. And, yeah, just to imagine that 74, 75-mile-per-hour winds coming in so suddenly like that. We're going to show you some of the video and the pictures that we're getting in right now. This is the Chick-fil-A parking lot on Salem Bridge Road in Newton County. And if you look quickly, you can see a car SUV turned over. The roof is kind of facing the viewer facing out right there. There was another car that was also turned on its side. It landed kind of squeezed between two other cars in this parking lot. And here's a view of this car you can see it is smashed 
up. I, I just hope that no one was inside when it happened. Justin Wilfon is with us too. Yeah, I've been talking with a worker uh, who works at that Chick-fil-A and sent us those pictures uh, in Newton County. He says there were some minor injuries, uh, but luckily no serious injuries from what appears to have been a small tornado, he says, that touched down there earlier this evening. Now we're seeing uh, some video from someone driving there also in Newton County. You can see those threatening clouds, Linda. Absolutely. And whoever was uh, was in the passenger seat, hopefully, when they saw those threatening clouds started to take that video, uh, it really was remarkable how quickly these storms popped up and how severely they blew in to this area. We're talking about the Covington area off I-20, Social Circle area. Uh, glad to hear that the injuries appear to be only minor in that parking lot. But as these storms uh, came in, it was dangerous very quickly for people out at Chick-fil-A on New Year's Eve with their family. And you could see there were many cars in the parking lot at the time, but it looks like two of those cars really got the worst of the damage. And this is a very frightening photo we were just looking at there uh, from Covington tonight. Tornado sirens uh, going off as well. This picture also in Newton County, a frightening scene there. You can only imagine uh, what those folks at the Chick-fil-A uh, were thinking when they saw this storm approaching. Linda, I know your family is as well. My family's in the Marietta Square uh, area. Very good news. Glenn has been telling us that storm has been uh, dissipating, even though there was a tornado warning in Cobb County a little earlier this evening. My family has been in the basement of our home for the past 30 minutes. Uh, but now, Glenn, it sounds like they can yeah. uh, return to uh, normal life there in Cobb County really, this evening. I, yeah, everything is pretty much gone that I can see. Uh, there you see the, the benign little showers there. Uh, I'll switch over to the radar there. You see the, the tornado warning has nothing in it. Uh, uh, the rain has moved on to the north and east there and is moving over toward Roswell. Uh, that's just a cluster of showers there and it's east of I-75 now and moving over toward Roswell. So uh, I'll put that in motion and you can see that basically it's just, I'll, I'll put it in motion over the last hour. That'll give us a good clue. Now watch what happens here. Pretty stout there, then uh, bam, nothing. It just and it falls apart. All right, all right. The the tornado warning was uh, was just uh, done there, and uh, I think it's going to be pretty much done with this storm over here in uh, in the south of Watkinsville. So the tornado warning over over now for Cobb. Rest easy, come out. It's okay. Uh, still, uh, I don't like the looks of this storm up here. If you just bear with me, this is coming on toward Dahlonega. Uh, this is a storm that has some really, it looks like some really strong straight line wind coming in with this. Let me query this just quickly and uh, give you an idea what's heading for you around Dahlonega. Uh, some really strong wind here around 48. Yeah, you can see that. So Dahlonega, I would be prepared for that strong wind. It's not severe wind, but is very capable with the amount of rain that we, with, that we saw over the last 48 hours, uh, this, this can create some real problems there. So there's that green and the red in a very short distance. That's some strong wind there. So that's eventually going to be approaching Cleveland as well. Uh, but the good news is we have the uh, storm, uh, tornado warning gone for Cobb County canceled. I suspect that this will be gone here shortly around Watkinsville. So we're going to go back to our anchor team and continue Channel 2 Action News. Yes, uh, thank you, Glenn, and good evening. I'm Justin Wilfon, in tonight for Justin Farmer. And good evening, everyone. I'm Linda Stouffer. What a New Year's Eve so far. We tracked a storm possible of producing tornadoes across the north and east metro Atlanta area for more than an hour. Severe Weather Team 2 will be here every minute preparing you for what's yet to come. You probably expected fireworks on New Year's Eve. Maybe not this. Well, this is after yesterday's severe weather washed out roads, took down power lines, and even tossed boat docks. Chief Meteorologist Glenn Burns tracked that weather with you early Thursday morning. Then again yesterday afternoon. Glenn is live right now in Severe Weather Center 2 to walk us through this New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Glenn. Yeah, New Year's Eve started out with a bang here, but it looks like we're going to be in a fairly decent shape for much of the day tomorrow. And I think through the night tonight, I don't see much in the way of rainfall at all. So I, need, I know you've joined us here. We've been covering tornadoes since about 540 this afternoon. But all looks like it's said and done there. Now, I want you to know tomorrow we're starting out with temperatures that are really, really warm. Now, this is going to be about 30 degrees above where we should be at this time of the year in Atlanta. There's a lot of fuel going on here as far as the heat energy goes. So we'll drive that forward here, drive the clock forward from 6 a.m. on toward the late morning and lunchtime. Still a chance for some showers as we climb into the 70s. 
So remember that. We have this warm air coming in. The record high for tomorrow is 75 degrees. We're going to be very close at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. We'll see mid-70s in and around the metro. And then, this is what I'm really concerned about. I just got some new data in, and I wanted to show you this because this is at 9 o'clock Saturday evening. See this wind here? This wind is 75 miles per hour, projected to be 75 miles an hour. It's co-located over the top of this intense squall line here. These winds can be brought down to the ground, and that's why the Storm Prediction Center has us in a risk for strong and severe thunderstorms again. Level 3 threat for northwestern Georgia so that by 11 o'clock, I know, right, coming in through the overnight hours, here it comes. Bam, that's your first line going on toward 2 a.m. Looks like the whole front is very slow moving as well. It's slowed down much more than it did in the models that we saw yesterday. So this is at 2 a.m. Then they go at 4 a.m. still in northwestern Georgia. We're going to see a ton of rain here, a ton of rain here, over two inches very likely. And they're going to see some really powerful thunderstorms in and around metro Atlanta beginning around 4 to 5 a.m. They'll continue to move on toward the east-southeast toward 8 a.m. as the cold front approaches from the west. Still going strong here at noontime on Sunday. Really hefty rainfall, strong storms, Athens to Eatonton. And then that finally clears out toward the late afternoon. Now, following this is a weather disturbance that's coming on through behind the front. Now, that's coming in when the cold air is coming in, so that by overnight Sunday into early Monday, this is at 1 a.m., this is our European model, and I think this is probably the best-case scenario here, and it's going to be mainly above 1,500 feet from the data I've seen. This will be a little bit of a wintry mix here across the North Georgia Mountains, mainly elevations above 1,500 feet. Ground's way too warm to support any kind of accumulations there, but possibly... Uh, the, Euro the European model is not as aggressive, but the, the new GFS model, this one just came in, as a matter of fact, does show that wintry mix extending from the mountains now down into the western suburbs of Atlanta on toward northwestern Georgia. So I'm going to be here in Severe Weather Center, too, through Saturday night into Sunday morning with you, and I'll keep you informed every step of the way. But those are the two scenarios right now. But the main thing to remember tomorrow night through the overnight hours, the threat for strong and severe thunderstorms, which will produce tornadoes, damaging winds, very heavy rainfall, frequent cloud-to-ground lightning, and possibly some more flooding as the very heavy, very heavy rainfall continues across northern Georgia. Now, in my five-day forecast, I wanted to show you that we're going to see improving additions as the cold air arrives on Monday. But the next couple of days are going to be pretty dicey here. 47 degrees for high Monday after a low of 32. We'll be down to 32 Tuesday morning and a high near 50. And then Wednesday warming up to the mid to upper 50s. And tomorrow during the day, we'll see a 30% chance of rain. But that rain chance really ramps up to 100% as we go into Saturday night. And I'm being joined by meteorologist Brian Monahan and Ebony Dion through the overnight hours. And we'll keep you informed every step of the way.